everybody, it's Miss Marie and Hero. We're here today to get ready for Thanksgiving. We're going to be taking all the plates out and making sure everything is clean and ready uh, for our special holiday that we're having this year. It will be smaller than other holidays we've had. We're only going to have a few people here, um, but that's okay because we still feel very, very thankful for having our friends and family together and for all the nice food we're going to have. We feel thankful for our little loved ones and we feel thankful for the house we live in. So there's lots of things to be thankful for this year and I hope that you will also be thankful to have some great stories soon. So come with me and we're going to read some special Thanksgiving stories. See you soon. All right, are you ready for shaking like a leafy tree? Here we go. Everybody shake high and low. Shaking like a leafy tree. Everybody shake high and low. Shaking like a leafy tree. Shake, 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 shake out your branches. Bend, 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 bend in the breeze. Shake, 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 shake all around you. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Everybody shake high and low. Shaking like a leafy tree. Everybody shake high and low. Shaking like a leafy tree. All right, you ready for some great stories? Come on with me. All right, I am ready to read to you my favorite Thanksgiving stories. Um, they tend to be about family gatherings and things like that, which is my favorite part of Thanksgiving. This first one I'm gonna read to you though is very silly. It's about a mouse who comes upon a Thanksgiving feast and like many of us, puts a little too much on his plate um, and maybe wasn't such a good idea. So this one is called One is a Feast for a Mouse. And it's a Thanksgiving story by Judy Cox, illustrated by Jeffrey Eb Ebler, and published by Holiday House. And right there you can see little mouse looking sad. He's got no food on his plate. He's he's got his little his little spool of thread as a table and no food on his plate. So let's see what happens. One is a feast for a mouse. After Thanksgiving dinner, Mouse crept out of his hidey hole and looked around. Do you see him? His hidey hole is up in this clock. The house was quiet. Dad snoozed in his chair with his book. Mom dozed in front of the TV. Outside, the kids played football in the crisp yellow leaves. Cat curled up by the fire. He yawned and stretched his stripy tail, then closed his greeny eyes and went to sleep. So there's Mouse checking everybody out. People are asleep, cat's sleeping. Sounds like it's safe for Mouse to know, right? Mouse scampered up the tablecloth. Thanksgiving leftovers were still on the table. So much to eat. Mouse saw a teensy tiny toothsome green pea all by itself under a plate. Give thanks, he thought. One will be a feast for me. Mouse rolled the pea across the table to take it back to his hidey hole. There he is on the table with all kinds of good stuff, including handmade gifts from the kids. And Mouse is going to take that pee. But then his eyes were bigger than his stomach. He saw six leftover cranberries glowing like rubies on a silver, silver saucer. I'll just take one, he said to himself. One is a feast for me. He balanced one cranberry on top of the pea and started once again across the table to his hidey hole. And you see him on top of the rolls and he sees these beautiful looking cranberries and he wants those. Just then he saw three olives, black and shiny on a dish. I'll just take one, he thought. One is a feast for me. He put the olive on top of the pea, on top of the cranberry and carried the tidbits across the table. So he's got his pea and cranberry and now he's gonna take one of these olives. Then he saw the carrot sticks, crunchy and munchy and orange. I'll just take one, he thought. One is a feast for me. He stuck one of the carrots into the hole in the olive, balanced both on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea, and started back to his hidey hole. And there you see him behind the glass, carrying lots of things. <laughs> That's a funny picture because it I don't know if you can tell, but it sort of magnifies him because of the water in the glass. It makes him look bigger. Then he saw the mashed potatoes. Mouse potatoes. 
There was just one scoop left on the plate. I'll just take the plate, Mouse thought. What a feast I will have. He balanced the plate of potatoes on top of the carrot stick in the hole, in the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea. Mouse started off across the table. Oh my God, I think these are salt and pepper shakers. Told them salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> Popular for Thanksgiving. Then he saw the gravy, brown and luscious, in the silver gravy boat. Gravy for the mouse potatoes, he thought. I must have that for my feast. And he balanced the gravy boat on top of the mashed potatoes, on top of the carrot stick, in the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea, and he started off. Whoa. Look at that little tiny mouse carrying all of those things. Oh my goodness. But then... He spotted the pumpkin pie, one slice of pie, brown and dimpled, with a collar of fluffy cream. So he balanced the pie on top of the gravy board, on top of the mashed potatoes, on top of the carrot stick, in the hole, in the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea. And he started off across the table. Oh my goodness. Oh, how is this little mouse going to manage all of that? What do you see? The pie slid, but Mouse caught it just in time. Mouse bobbed and bobbled across the tablecloth on his way to his hidey hole for his Thanksgiving feast. He didn't see the cat creeping closer and closer. Cat's under the table watching. But Mouse saw the turkey brown and juicy surrounded with parsley. Much was gone, but there was enough left for a mouse feast or even two. I'll just add that, thought Mouse, and he carefully placed the turkey platter on the very top of his pile, on top of the pie, on top of the gravy, on top of the mashed potatoes, on top of the carrot stick, stuck in the hole in the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea. <laughs> he still got the pea and the cranberry, too. That's a lot of food. Oh, dear. Oh no. <laughs> and he started off across the table to his hidey hole. And there at the table's edge, he met Cat, greedy eyed and hungry, clawing up on the tablecloth. Oh no, look how close the cat is to the little mouse. Oh no, little mouse, you've got to get away. Mouse skidded to a stop. The turkey wibbled and wobbled, slid and slipped. Mouse danced to keep his balance, his feast balanced, pirouetted like a ballerina, juggled like a platter spinner, but off slid the turkey, whoosh, with a plop, landing smack on cat. Well, all the food, it looks like it's all falling down. Down crashed the pumpkin pie and the boat with the gravy. Down crashed the mashed potatoes with a clatter that woke mom. Down fell the carrot stick, impa still impaled in the olive. Down went the cranberry, which rolled, leaving a red track across the tablecloth. Down went the pea, all caterwumpus off the table, rolling onto the floor. Off scampered mouse, quick as a bandit, back to his hidey hole, ahead of cat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I bet that would be a loud noise. <laughs> he huddled in his hidey hole, his heart pitter-pattered, he peered out. Down came the broom on the stripy, greeny-eyed cat. Bad kitty, shooed mom, outside. And she swept the cat out the door. I think mom thinks the cat knocked all that stuff over. But really, it was the mouse. Mouse looked around, whiskers trembling with fright. No Thanksgiving feast for me, he thought. But just then, he spotted, glowing in the corner. You see him up in his hidey hole in the clock. He doesn't want to come down. But then, what does he see? One teensy, tiny, round and toothsome, green and luscious pea. Give thanks. One is a feast for me. And that's the end. There's Mouse in his little hidey hole inside the clock having a pee for feast. And that is the end of that story. Thank goodness he got away from the cat. But um, he needs to not have such a greedy big eye next time and take just the pee. That was enough for him. One. <laughs> and that's a really fun story. I love to read that one at story time uh, for Thanksgiving. So now I thought I would do some of our Thanksgiving rhymes that we do. And I'll first start off with the little turkey that we do on the, on the board. Here we go. We say, Mr. Turkey, 
need some feathers. You ready, Mr. Turkey? Need some feathers. Need some feathers. Need some feathers. Mr. Turkey needs some feathers. Let's see what we can do. Oh, Mr. Turkey, here's an orange feather. Here's an orange feather. Here's an orange feather. Oh, Mr. Turkey, here's an orange feather. We hope that we will, that will do. But is it enough? Oh, no. Mr. Turkey needs some more feathers. You ready? Oh, Mr. Turkey, here's a red feather. Here's a red feather. Here's a red feather. Oh, Mr. Turkey, here's a red feather. We hope that that will do. Will that do? Oh, no. Mr. Turkey needs more feathers. Oh, Mr. Turkey, here's a brown feather. Here's a brown feather. Here's a brown feather. Oh, Mr. Turkey, here's a brown feather. We hope that this will do. Is that going to do? No, I think he needs a little bit more. Oh, Mr. Turkey, here's a yellow feather. Here's a yellow feather. Here's a yellow feather. Oh, Mr. Turkey, here's a yellow feather. We hope that this will do. Oh, I think that that's it. Hooray, Mr. Turkey has all of his feathers, has all his feathers, has all his feathers. Oh, Mr. Turkey has all his feathers just in time for Thanksgiving. Mr. Turkey's ready. Look how handsome he looks. All right, nice. <laughs> Everybody likes that when they like to do the colors with me too. The red and yellow and brown, it's orange. They like to do that. So let's put this one down. I'm gonna teach you a rhyme called mashed potatoes. You can do it on your knees. I'm gonna do it up a little bit higher so you can see, you ready? Because mashed potatoes are pretty much my favorite thing at Thanksgiving, so here we go. Mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes, piled up high. Mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes, up to the sky. Mashed potato sun, mashed potato moon. Eat them all up with a giant spoon. Mmm, yummy. Let's try one more time, ready? Mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes, piled up high. Mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes, up to the sky. Mashed potato sun, mashed potato moon. Eat them all up with a giant spoon. Nom, 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 nom. It's terrific. It's my favorite. All right. Are you ready to hear a really nice story about, it's not really necessarily just a Thanksgiving story. It's just a thankful story um, for sharing food together. And it's called Thank You Omu. And it's by Ogi Mora. And I believe Ogi Mora does the pictures as well. Omu is pronounced Amu. Sorry, I said it wrong. Amu. And it is the Igbo term for queen. So Amu is queen. She's kind of the queen of the neighborhood. And here you can see it's a busy, a busy neighborhood. And this book is published by Little Brown. Thank you, Amu. I'm going to make sure I say it correctly. And there's Amu. I can see her. And she's got something cooking. She's got something really nice cooking. Let's see. On the corner of First Street and Long Street, on the very top floor, Amu was cooking a thick red stew in a big fat pot for a nice evening meal. She seasoned and stirred it and took a small taste. What a delicious stew, Amu said. Tonight dinner will surely be the best that I've ever had. Look at that, that does look beautiful. Nice stew. With that, Amu put down her spoon and went to read a book before supper. As the thick red stew simmered on the stove, its scrumptious scent wafted out of the window and out the door and down the hall toward the street and around the block until, knock, knock, someone was at the door. When Amu opened it, she saw a little boy. Little boy, Amu exclaimed, what brings you to my home? I was playing with my race car down the hall when I smelled the most delicious smell, the little boy replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Mmm, stew, he sighed. That sounds yummy. And the little boy is hinting he might want some. <laughs> Amu thought for a moment. She was saving her stew for dinner, but she had made quite a bit. It would not hurt to share. Would you like some? The little boy nodded. So Amu spooned out some thick red stew from her big fat pot for their nice evening meal. Thank you, Amu, the little boy said, and went on his way. So he's gonna have a little bit of Amu's stew. With that, 
Amu closed the door and went back to her book. As she read, her thick red stew scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street and around the block until, knock, knock, someone was at the door. When Amu opened the door, this was what she saw. Who's coming now? But look, you can see it wafting out into the that nice smell is covering the neighborhood. It was a police officer, Ms. Police Officer, Amu exclaimed. What brings you to my home? I was on duty down the street when I smelled the most delicious smell, Ms. Police Officer replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Ah, stew, she said, and her mouth watered. That sounds mighty tasty. Hmm, is somebody else hinting they want some stew? Amu thought for a moment. There was still enough to share. Would you like some? The police officer nodded. Once again, Amu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Amu, the officer said, and went on her way. Amu's very generous. She's sharing with everybody. And for the second time, Amu closed the door and went back to her book. Sure enough, as she read, her thick red stew scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street and around the block until, knock, knock, knock. Again, someone was at Amu's door. This time when she opened it, she saw a hot dog vendor. Mr. Hot Dog Vendor, Amu exclaimed. What brings you to my home? I was selling my hot dogs down the block. <coughs> A hot dog vendor. Mr. Hot Dog Vendor, Amu exclaimed, what brings you to my home? I was selling my hot dogs down the block when I smelled the most delicious smell, Mr. Hot Dog Vendor replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Oh, stew, the vendor licked his lips. That sounds quite delectable. Well, the hot dogs said I want some. So Amu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Amu, the hot dog vendor said, and went on his way. Is she gonna have any lunch? Let's see. Throughout the day, people from all across the neighborhood knocked on Amu's door. She fed a shop owner, a cab driver, a doctor, an actor, a lawyer, a dancer, a baker, an artist, a singer, and an athlete, a bus driver, a construction worker. Even the mayor stopped by. And each time they knocked, Amu shared. Soon the sky darkened, the street lights brightened, and it was time for dinner. But when Amu opened her big fat pot of thick red stew for her nice evening meal, it was empty. Uh-oh, there's nothing left. Now what's she gonna eat? Amu sniffled. There goes the best dinner I ever had. Sorry and blue, she sat at the table with her empty pot until knock, 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 knock. Who could that be, Amu wondered. When she opened the door, she saw the little boy, the police officer, the hot dog vendor, the shop owner, the cab driver, the doctor, the actor, the lawyer, the dancer, the baker. Why, everyone she fed today was at her door. I'm sorry, everyone, Amu sighed. My thick red stew is all gone. I have nothing left to share. The little boy tugged at Amu's sleeve. Don't worry, Amu, we are not here to ask. We are here to give. Oh, let's see what they're gonna share. The police officer carried in a fresh salad. The mayor entered with a roast chicken. The baker brought a collection of sweet goodies. Even the little boy presented Amu with something special in a shiny red envelope. Everyone who had knocked on Amu's door that day squeezed inside her tiny apartment and together they ate, danced, and celebrated. While Amu's big fat pot of thick red stew was empty, her heart was full of happiness and love. Look at all those neighbors coming to share with her. The dinner was the best she had ever had. And look, the little boy gave her a card that says, thank you, Amu. And that's the name of the book. And the author just says that um, in the Nigerian language, of her parents, Amu means queen, yet for her growing up, it meant grandma. That's what she called her grandma. And there she is in the back, the author, with this lovely book. And there's that nice picture of the neighborhood again. And maybe this year our, our Thanksgivings will be a little bit quieter, but maybe next year we can have a bigger Thanksgiving again, which I think was really sweet. And like I said, it's not really a Thanksgiving story, but 
it's just a nice story about thankfulness and sharing, which I thought was perfect for Thanksgiving. All right. <clears throat> How about we do one of the things that we always do at our Thanksgiving story time. We like to practice our please and thank yous because you're going to be sitting at the table with maybe some food you're not used to, some different foods on the table. And you have to learn to say no thank you or yes please if you would like some or if you don't like some. So the first one is peas. I love peas, so I would say yes please. If you don't like peas, you should say no thank you and pass the plate to somebody else. Usually we sit in a circle when we do this and it's a lot of fun. How about corn? Is that a yes please or a no thank you? I'm gonna say no thank you and I'm gonna pass it to somebody else at the table. Oh, you know how I feel about mashed potatoes. I will say yes please and I'll take some on my plate and I will pass it to the next person and leave some for them too. Oh, I love these ones too, sweet potatoes. But you say yes please or no thank you to that? Yes please? All right. How about some bread? Um, for me, that's gonna be a yes please. <laughs> and I'm gonna pass it to somebody else. Now, not everybody likes dressing or stuffing, um, especially if you're having bread, maybe it's too much. So you might say no thank you and you pass the stuffing to somebody else. How about salad? I like salad, so I will say, yes, please. Take a little bit, pass it to somebody else. And how about broccoli? Yes, please. I like broccoli a lot. How about you? Do you like it? Is that a yes, please, or a no, thank you? Okay. And last but not least, pumpkin pie. I'm gonna say no, thank you, because I'm waiting for the apple pie to come by. But if you like pumpkin pie, you would say, yes, please. And that's our please and thank you game that we play at the library for Thanksgiving to practice our manners. And then I have a really silly song to teach you. It's called, please, please, please pass the peas. Okay, and it goes like this, ready? Please, please, please pass the peas. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome, 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 welcome. Good manners are a very nice touch. And then you're supposed to sing it even faster. Can you do it faster? Please, please, please pass the peas. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome, 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 welcome. Good manners are a very nice touch. That was hard. hard. Should I try one more time? Please, please, please pass the peas. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome, 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 welcome. Good manners are a very nice touch. <laughs> so you can keep trying it faster or slower, however you like. Please, please, please pass the peas. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome, 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 welcome. Good manners are a very nice touch. And they are a very nice touch to have good manners, especially at Thanksgiving when we're sharing all the food. We have to remember our please and thank yous. All right. I have one more really nice story for you today before we head over to do our craft, if you picked up the craft. And it's called Around the Table That Granddad Built. And it's by Melanie Hooser Hill and illustrated by Jamie Kim. And it's a really nice family story. And it is published by Candlewick Press. And uh, you can see here a lovely centerpiece of vegetables and, and flowers around the table that Granddad built. This is the table that Granddad built. Looks like it's very long. These are the sunflowers picked by my cousins set on the table that Granddad built. Nice to have flowers on the table if you can. These are the napkins sewn by mom surrounding the sunflowers picked by my cousins set on the table that Granddad built. They're putting out a lot of napkins. So I think we're expecting kind of a big family, we'll see. These are the plates, red, orange, and yellow. The kids are helping to set the table that go with the napkins sewn by mom surrounding the sunflowers picked by my cousins set on the table that granddad built. And you can help set the table too, I bet. These are the glasses from mom and dad's wedding. Oh, up here, they're picking down the glasses to put at the table. Set by our plates, red, orange, and yellow that go with the napkins sewn by mom surrounding the sunflowers picked by my cousins set on the table that granddad built. Oh, mommy's like worried because she's carrying all the 
cups and one with one piece of left over. These are the forks and spoons and knives, gifts from Dad's grandma long ago. I have a little silverware too. Placed by the glasses from mom and dad's wedding, set by our plates, red, orange, and yellow, that go with the napkins sewn by mom, surrounding the sunflowers picked by my cousins, set on the table that granddad built. This is the squash that took over our garden. These are the potatoes and peppers we roasted, and these are the beans overflowing the bowl. Look at all these nice, nice veggies. That's like my favorite part of Thanksgiving, all the nice veggies. This is a stack of toasty tamales. These are the samosas, spicy and hot. And this is the rice pudding we have every year. You can see every family can bring different things to Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to always be the same stuff. And here they're bringing in tamales and rice pudding and samosas. Mm. This is the bread, still warm, that Gran baked. This is the butter made by us kids, and this is Dad's huckleberry jam. Mm -hmm. See, everybody's adding a little something. And kids can make butter. Um, on one of our student birthdays, we made butter. And here are the pies. I made this one myself. It's a nice little smiley face on there. You can make your own pies too with apple crumble. For these hands we hold, for tasty good food, for family and friends, for grace that is given and love that is shared, we give thanks. Oh, what a nice table. Around this table that granddad built. Everybody's passing and sharing their food now. And that is the end. Look, there's only one piece of pie left. I hope that little mouse doesn't find out from our first book and come back for that pie. And that is the end of the celebration of family and friends. It's a great story for the perfect for the holiday or every day, right? All right. Um, well, it's almost time to say goodbye. And I want to wish you all a really, really wonderful Thanksgiving. And this is our last story time for the fall, about the last regular story time. Next week, we're going to have a special story time. Um, with, we're going to do stuffed pets and we're going to read books about a pet, a particular pet to surprise. And then the week after that, we're doing another special story time about ice cream, which was the winner of our election day poll. Ice cream was everybody's favorite. So we're gonna be doing a special ice cream story time. Um, so you can call me to pick up a little craft for that if you'd like. And, and then after that, we're gonna be having every day, uh, Miss Alyssa or I are going to read to you uh, books from our holiday collection about either winter or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or uh, uh, Christmas. And then after that, we'll also be doing some of our 100 books before kindergarten. We'll be doing those every day, too. All right, so have a great holiday, and I will see you soon. Let's sing our goodbye song one more time. You ready? See you later, alligator, in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. Goodbye. Okay, for our Thanksgiving craft, we're going to be making a turkey that we could hang on the door, hang on your mantelpiece, wherever you would like to hang it. I've separated out some of the pieces. I put all the feathers together. I put the two legs together, the two circles here. And then I took out the turkey's wings, the hat, the collar, and the turkey head, and I put them aside. Because first, I think the easiest thing to do is going to be to glue um, the feathers. It looks like they did it on the back of the yellow piece, so that way they'll stick out and you'll have this sort of ruffly part in between. And then you can just do that however you like. I have, there's all different colors, so we can mix it up. Um, brown, green, so I'm going to start with a brown one. You'll need your glue stick for this. I'm going to turn the yellow piece over and put a little bit of glue on the feather like this and pop it on the back. And let's pick a different color. Let's do some red, maybe green. And I think I did brown again first, right? Brown, red. 
together a little bit. Clean my house. Move this around a little bit. And you can see when I turn it over, it's making a nice pretty pattern there. Um, let's see, let's end up with green. So next I'm gonna do brown. Red. And then green. Pretty sure it gave us a lot of feathers. I guess they really want this turkey to be fluffy. A fluffy, beautiful turkey. Let's see, I might have to add a couple on the other side too. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to look really nice no matter what we do. So I guess that's coming together. Eh, I didn't really need these extra feathers. Eh, maybe I'll keep going. I'll go back. I'll go past. I'll go down here even further. And now I'm going to take this darker brown circle and I'm going to put it right in the middle here. So let's put some glue on the back of that. Put that on there for a second. Good. And now, hmm, let's see, what should we do next? Let's do the turkey's head. Nice big handsome head. Put that on there like that. And we're going to need a pilgrim hat. on the bottom of that. Pop it on his head. He's got this pilgrim collar as well. And it goes down around his neck like that. Okay. Now let's put on the wings. And that one looks done. He's got these big silly feet. So those can go down here. thing is the hanger and you probably would want to take that from the back. Oops. Let's put some more glue on this one. I think I'm going to tape mine because I don't know that the glue will hold and I'll tape it right back here behind his head like that. And that is our turkey decoration for Thanksgiving. I hope you have fun making that. You can share it with your family. In your, to decorate your house for Thanksgiving. And I hope you all have a wonderful and very, very happy Thanksgiving. And I will see you soon. Bye.